The other day, I was home alone, watching the Shrek reunion special on HBO, when I realized that I didn't have any friends to experience this amazing work of art with. Now, I've tried having friends before, but they all leave me as soon as I tell them that I love to take SpongeBob and Patrick action figures and fuse them together to make the perfect toy. I call him Pat Bob. So instead of making any more human friends, I decided to buy the next best thing. A monkey, because I had always heard that monkeys are 99% similar to us in DNA. And wouldn't you know, my pet monkey isn't interested in my Pat Bob collection either. That got me thinking, are humans and chimps DNA really that similar? Well, it first depends on the criteria you use to determine similarity. For instance, did you know that the song Thrift Shop by Macklemore is 100% similar to the Encyclopedia Britannica 15th edition 32 volume hybrid set from 1986? They both use all 26 letters of the alphabet. Whatever happened to Macklemore, by the way? So depending on whether we compare the proteins, RNA molecules, gene sequences, nucleotides, or chromosomes of chimps and humans, we could get varying results. But even accounting for all the possible variations in methodology, the actual similarity between human and chimp DNA is somewhere between 90 and 95%. Even if not 99%, there is a lot of similarity. So what does this similarity mean? Currently, the most popular explanation in the scientific community is that humans and chimps share a common ancestor. In this model, a population of creatures living 5 to 10 million years ago separated into two groups. Each group experienced different environments and their DNA accumulated mutations, causing the two groups to diverge. Over time, and due to natural selection, one of those groups became humans, and the other group became chimpanzees. The story is a little more complicated, but it provides a good explanation for why me and my pet monkey are different and that we have different tastes in music, and for why we are similar, and that we both like to throw poop at people walking past our house. But like most scientific data, there are other possible explanations worth considering. In this instance, a common designer instead of a common ancestor. Let me give you another example. Legos. Now, I know what you're thinking, Legos actually disprove God. Stepping on a Lego will make you rethink all your deeply held beliefs about the loving nature of God. But Legos are building blocks, just like our genes. With these building blocks, you can build an almost infinite variety of things, from small cars to elaborate towns to the Death Star. Except for the specialty pieces, all these items are built from the same basic blocks. After you have built a bunch of different structures, you can imagine analyzing the structures based on the components and ordering of the blocks. You would find a great degree of similarity with some rather obvious differences. Yet no one would say that my Lego model of this bulldozer is related to my Lego model of the principal from Matilda. They don't have a common ancestor, they have a common designer. When we when we look at DNA, the idea of a common designer becomes more enticing. In many ways, DNA acts just like computer programs that we produce. When we look at how an expert computer programmer writes programs, we see the same result as when we look at DNA. An expert programmer develops a large library of subroutines that accomplish specific smaller jobs. That library of subroutines gets attached to every sophisticated program. All the differences in the sophisticated programs arise in a small section that organizes the sequencing and frequency of calls to the library. Analysis of these programs would show a very high degree of similarity in the words used. And, just like the Lego, those similarities reflect the work of a common designer, not a common ancestor. All this to say that since scientists don't have a complete understanding of how DNA works, the conclusion of a common ancestor does not necessarily follow from the similarities between species. The correct answer will ultimately be decided on corroborating evidence outside of these similarities, and since both common ancestry and common design can be reasonable answers to this question, they should both be explored in greater detail. We should also remember that many Christians believe that God used the process of evolution to create life. This means that we should see evidence of design even if we share a common ancestor. If God is truly the creator of life, the evidence of common design should grow as we understand how DNA translates into the diversity of life we see here on Earth. Thank you for watching! Comment below any questions you may have, like and subscribe, and check out reasons.org for more info on this topic. We'll see you next time!